Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, May fucking 23rd, dude. May 23rd. Oh, look at this, and I'm back. I have a little, I got a new mixer. I'm sitting in a chair. I'm upright. I got a microphone. And I have things that I need to say. I really don't. Other than I had like one of the best fucking weekends of stand up I've had in uh in my 30 years of going on stage and talking about my fucking freckled cock. I got <laughs> As I've talked about my spotted ball bag over the years, I've seen a lot of change. Some of it good, some of it bad, and I am here to bring back the good. And if elected, I will make this white town even whiter. Build the wall. Build the wall. Fucking lunatics. Uh, Why are people into politics? I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Why can't you just fucking shut up? The fucking news off. The news. (laughs) Do you watch the news? I watch 24 hours of news. Fucking brainwashed idiot. Um, Oh, I wish we were all smart like you, Bill. Bill, I do too, huh? I do too. Um, Anyway, I was in Tampa, Florida, as opposed to Ohio. Guessing there's a Tampa in Ohio. They have a Miami, Ohio. Why wouldn't they have a Tampa or a Sarasota? Lake Okeechobee. Um, and then I was down in West Palm Beach. Both the places I performed at were at, were um, amphitheaters. And the first day I get to Tampa, right? Uh, I took a red eye out there with Forrest Shaw. And, uh, you know. It's a red eye. The next day you fucking wake up, you feel all banged up and all of that shit. It's weird. You feel like you went out boozing and you didn't. Because it's a deceivingly short flight. At least it is for me because I'm used to flying diagonally across the country. So it takes at least five, you know, six hours or whatever, unless you got some psycho tailwind. Then you just realize it's only four hours to Atlanta. If you just go straight across another fucking half hour and you're in Tampa. Tampa. So, anyway, uh, we end up landing out there, and uh, my new vice is I went out and I got a cup of coffee, and I'm fucking hanging out, and it's hot as as fucking hell. Florida hot, tropical hot, you know, Vietnam. It's America's Vietnam. Florida is America's Vietnam, okay? It's fucking as humid as possible, the biggest bugs I've ever seen in my fucking life, and I'm just sitting there. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. I was excited to be in Tampa because, ladies and gentlemen, they are about to go. They're going to win three cups in a row. They just, I just think they're going to do it. I don't know why. Maybe because they won two in a row. I just feel like they're going to do it. I feel like they, they, although I didn't realize the Edmonton Oilers also had Patrick Kane. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty formidable line. But um, I just think they're going to do it. Um, anyway, so sitting out there, you know, drinking coffee and shit, and, uh, you know, Florida, what do they call it, a sunny place for shady people, these fucking homeless people, so goddamn friendly, they're driving around, they're riding by on bikes, they're like, hey, how you doing, and, you know, I'm a friendly guy, I'm like, I'm doing good, right, and then you start thinking, like, okay, now, what do I owe that guy now, you know, because he said hello to me, and I said hello back, it's like prison, you go to prison, if some guy offers you some food, don't, don't fucking accept it, because now you owe him something, And he's going to come back for payment in whatever form of, uh, I don't know what. It always involves your fucking anal cavity. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, shit. Um, Anyway, um, so we were sitting out there. We had a great fucking time. I met some people. I invited them out to the show, but it was hot as balls. And I'm like, oh, my God, this reminds me when I used to do the Comedy Connection gig down in fucking Newport, Rhode Island in that fucking tent, and it would be hot as fucking hell, and I would go up there. I'm a professional. I wear long sleeves when I'm on stage for the most part. I just do, all right? I, there's something about showing your arms. It just seems like you're just you're wearing a T-shirt up there. What am, what, am, what am I doing? Did I come here to fucking, you know, 
do one of those fall cleanups on your front and back yard? Or am I here to be a, a professional comedian? For some reason, I feel like a professional comedian, you have to have long sleeves. So anyway, as luck would have it, it fucking rains out. And it just cools the whole place down. There's this ridiculous breeze. And I have a brand new button-down shirt. I'm all excited. I think it's a nice color to wear on stage. You know? I don't have a care in the fucking world. I've gotten through the first edit of this movie. Now it's getting easier. Instead of doing six minutes a day, you can do like 12 to 15. And each time you can fucking crank a little faster. And then you add music and it's exciting. My life's getting exciting, man. And then I'm fucking sitting there waiting to go on. Four shots fucking killing. And I don't know what happened. I opened one of those liquid deaths without even thinking. I didn't realize it was full, full. I just fucking, right before I went up, I just literally just didn't even make it to my mouth. I just dumped it all over my shirt and my lap. And you know the deal. When you, when you spill liquid on your lap, it always lands right at the tip of your dick. So it looks like you just pissed yourself, right? So I fuck up my whole shirt. I have to put on a T-shirt. And go out there not wearing long sleeves, breaking my rule of being a professional comedian. But I got to tell you something. I went out there. There was this cool breeze the entire show coming off the water. I, I was joking around. I felt like I was in a fucking tampon commercial, right? Just, <laughs> <laughs> Just feeling fresh and invigorated and all of that. And it was a, um, it was just a great show. And then the next day, we fly down to Miami. I get another cup of coffee, right? I smoke a little cigar out on the balcony, and then I go for a fucking walk around the marina. It's hot as balls, and I go, it's Florida. It's going to fucking rain again. It's going to rain again, and then it's going to cool off, and it's going to be great. And this time, I'm not spilling any water on my shirt. Well, guess what? Everything that I said happened except for the rain. It never happened, and it was still fucking hot as shit. Um... And whenever it's sticky like that, I always I always think muggy. Remember that Greg Giraldo bit, rest his soul? Having the Mexican guy doing the weather. You know, hot, muggy. Good day to cross the river. Remember that? I always when I can't say muggy without saying muggy. Um certain people's bits just get stuck in your head is what I'm saying. It's like a song. Um, I hope that made sense. Anyway. Uh, so I go on stage and I'm, now I'm wearing the shirt that I spilt water on the night before, but it's water. So it's fine. And, uh, I go out there and it was just hot as fuck. I didn't even realize it. I got off stage. I looked at the back of the shirt. It looked like I, I helped somebody move a three bedroom apartment. <laughs> the whole back was all fucking all wet. It was fucking disgusting. But, uh, the crowd was awesome. Both shows was fucking awesome. And it was such a thrill I've never headlined an amphitheater. I've done stand-up in them a couple of times um, way back in the day on on tours with bigger acts or a whole bunch of big acts or something like that, and I was going on like third or whatever, but I'd never gone out and headlined one. And it took me back to going to Great Woods in 1986, I want to say. I saw Eddie Murphy on the Raw tour, and I saw Rodney Dangerfield with uh, 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 Jeff Nelson opening. The Weather Girls opened up for Eddie Murphy, and I saw them at Great Woods in Mansfield, Massachusetts, which I now think is called the Tweeter Center or some shit like that. And uh, I've, it was fucking amazing. I was like, wow. I have not been to a stand-up show or headlined a stand-up show at one of these things ever. And this was like, this was the venue that I, when I went and saw stand-up live for the first time that summer, um... I don't know if I made the decision to be a comedian, but it was definitely a, a moment in my life where I was like, can you imagine <laughs> getting to do that? I'll tell you what else there was. I saw that same, in that same venue, one time I saw that, uh, what is that band? Bag of Carousel. Tempted by the fruit of another. Remember that's who? What was it? Well, I saw them. They opened for, uh, I think Fleetwood Mac or something. Yes, it was one of the whitest crowds you've ever seen in your life. Oh yeah, dude. Some of the, the I saw some of the whitest shows ever. I had a free ticket to fucking uh, John Cougar Mellencamp, uh, which is great because I got to see Kenny Aronoff. 
which was why I was there. I was literally there to watch Kenny Aronoff fucking lay down those grooves all night. That's why I went there. And then the but anyway, I I saw that band. It's a great song too. Whatever that song is. Um and whoever their drummer was, it wasn't their original drummer. It was a hired gun. And this guy was fucking killing it. Absolutely killing it. The fucking, you know, both arms looked like he was, he was like doing that break dance move. Like, like uh, whatever the fuck you call that, where they pass it from one side of their body to the other. You know what I mean? Doing that molar shit. But it was effortless. Fucking effortless. He had a big smile on his face. Like, just absolutely killing it. I could not stop fucking watching him. So, um, I saw Stevie Ray Vaughan there. I saw a lot of shit there, man. So, uh, to be, actually be able to come back and do an amphitheater. So, this is my long way of saying thank you to everybody for uh, who came out this, this past weekend. And uh, you know what? I'm using this whole new fucking device, and I have no idea how much time I've done. Now, there's no timer on this thing. Bar 337.4. What the fuck does that mean? All right, what do you guys think I've done here? This feels about seven or eight minutes maybe, right? We'll say seven minutes. So that means I started at 7.23, so I got to go to 8.23. See, people, I'm punching a clock too. I'm punching a clock too. Hey, I'll tell you who isn't punching a fucking clock right now is your Boston Red Sox. Huh? Everybody getting down on them. Oh, they're doing this, they're doing that. Trevor Story literally getting a Bronx cheer. The man got booed. I mean, the man made a lot of money, and the man was not producing, and the man was playing in Boston, so the guy's going to get booed. So he got fucking booed. Well, guess what he did this weekend? Huh? Fucking guy this weekend hit five home runs, had 13 RBIs, and seven runs scored. And the Boston Red Sox are on a five-game winning streak. And uh, I could not be happier. I've been keeping an eye on it. I was, you know, I'm missing everything because I'm out here fucking working my ass off. Um, very excited about that. I can't believe how into baseball I am this year. I think it's because I went to that Red Sox game early on this year. And I immediately, it just, you know, after the pressure of the pregame shit was over. And then I was just sitting there eating a fucking hot dog and I was keeping score. I was just like, this is fucking awesome. I wish I lived... Back in Boston, and I could walk to the park, you know? And I wish they had more day games for old guys like me, and I could just keep score, and they would just let me smoke. Just I mean, David Ortiz has these little fucking cigars, man. They're called firecrackers. You got, if you get them, you got to get them. The size of, like, dog walkers, right? You just go out in the street. You walk down the street. You have a couple of puffs. Think about your life. You have a good time, you know? You're not hurting anybody. It's a fucking great thing. It really is a great thing. I don't understand what the fuck happened. You know what it was? It was those goddamn cigarette smokers. You know what I mean? Smoking a cigarette is not an, ev- an event. It's a fucking, it's just, it's a habit. They're animals. They stand next to fucking dumpsters and shit. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I'm addicted to cigars. I mean, we all know this. So I have a fucking problem too. And, uh. I don't know why you just can't. Why can't they just, you know, you know, they have like they one of those things. They call it the rock pile. They have always have like these little fucking. I think that's in Colorado. They have like these little sections where it's like really cheap fucking seats. Just stick all the smokers out there. And then you just have a fan just blowing out, you know, blowing it up and over. Or just stick us in an enclosed thing with a giant smoke eater or something like. I don't know. I did realize this weekend, though, you know, when I now that I've, I've I've gotten into like drinking coffee or whatever, what I like about it is it's the same reason why I like a cigar. It's a stimulant. No, <laughs> no, I like it because it's um, it's a very social thing, or it can be a very sol- solitary thing. Same thing with the cigar. You can sit by yourself and reflect on the good and the bad you did for the week. You know, it really is like, you know, mentally going to church, right? And a cup of coffee can be the same way. You can either be like hanging out with people or you can just kind of sit there by yourself, 
you know, have a little fucking moment. I get it. I get why people like going out on their back porch. I understand it now. And uh, now that I've, you know, I've really given into the fact that I'm a fucking old man now. Um, underrated. Underrated. Being old and enjoying it. You know, I hate to tell young people this, but like the older people get, the less cool people there are. <laughs> You know, pe- things don't work out the way people want it to work out, and then they just get bitter, and they fucking, you know, and they just, they just, I don't know, and then they just sort of settle, and they don't, they don't pick themselves, pick themselves up, and get back in the race. They quit. They quit. They go to fucking friendlies. They pull out a coupon and get themselves a fribble. And they sit around and talk until noon about all the shit, all the shit they could have done. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of like that, you know. I found that when I became a parent, just a lot of negative shit. People, oh, get some sleep. How old's your kid? Oh, yeah? How's he acting? He's acting good. Oh, wait wait till your kid's my age. It's like, you ever think maybe you suck at it? Maybe you suck at being a parent? Um, I don't know. Speaking of that, I came home and uh, I have like these, you know, weekend daddy-daughter dates that I do when I come back from the road. It's the fucking best. And I actually pulled my truck out of the garage and my son is afraid of my truck. Not afraid. He likes the truck. He still calls it a car. He goes, Dada's car. And he goes, rum, rum. He does that, right? Which, of course, just makes me almost cry. I'm like, oh, my, he's a fucking man. He likes a fucking crook, right? So he loves the garage. Like when I open the garage, he squats all the way down. Like they do another reference to Vietnam. You know how they do that? That great thing that people in Asia do when, when rather than standing up, they squat all the way down, which is fucking great for you, they're finding. You know what I mean? You don't end up being that old guy with the blanket on his legs, you know, who needs help getting up. (laughs) That fucking blanket that becomes part of your pants after a while, right? So he squats down like that because he wants to see all the stuff and he knows he has to wait till the door stops and then he runs in and he's all excited. So he's always been afraid to go into my truck because, you know, it's dark in there and shit like that, so... I had to be like, nice truck, nice truck. So he's literally petting the outside of it. And then I got him to the point where I opened the door. He was sort of petting the side of the seat. And then today I had it out because I was going to, you know, I would drive it on the weekends, right? So I I had it out and uh, he saw it and uh, he was like fucking freaking out. And I brought him down there and I don't, you know, I just sort of sat into the truck with him and it was light out. And I was like, hey, buddy, you want to go for a ride? He's like, yeah. I don't even think he even knew what it was, what that meant. I don't know if that word is in his his uh, wheelhouse yet. And I turned the engine on, and it started up, and he just started screaming. No, no, it, when I, he looked at me, he was like, whoa. And then when I started moving, just creeping forward, like an eighth of a mile an hour, he fucking just went like, yeah. <laughs> just like It almost hurt my ear how much he was screaming. He was so friggin' excited. And, uh, yeah, so I just kept driving him to the end of the driveway, and then I would back up and just drive to the end of the driveway, and he absolutely loved it. And the only way I could get him out of my truck was I had to bribe him with a cookie. That's the only thing that gets him. When he gets when he gets fucking locked in and he wants to do some shit, he's a real, like, smart kid, strong-minded kid. And when he gets locked in and he wants to do something, the only there's only one way out, payola. In the form of a cookie, right? So I go, okay, buddy, we have to, we have to go out. You know, his new thing. He goes, no way. <laughs> and it makes me laugh every time. And he sees me laughing. So now he takes me even less seriously. So I have to like, I just have to go like, you know, I got to go payola. So I go, come on, buddy. Come on. We have to go. It's almost dinner time. You know, I got to put the truck away. Okay. We got to get out of the truck. He's like, no way. And I finally just go, uh. I go, you want a cookie? He just turns his head to me. He goes, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Bye-bye car. Bye-bye car. And the whole thing's over. 
That's all you got to do. You know, I don't know how do vegans do it. I don't get how they do it, you know. Those people that, you know, those people that like they care so much about their kids, they fuck them up, feed them like seaweed and all of that shit. You know, at some point, you know, you got to give your kid a hot dog. I guess you don't. You know, maybe I'm making fun of those parents because I, I, I look at the effort that they put in um, to try and find like, uh, you know, the right food or whatever that you're supposed to be feeding people. I actually follow this guy on um, on Instagram that has he has his own. Uh, he's got his own like he grows his own food. It's fucking amazing. You mean he has a garden bill? Yeah, I couldn't. I, sorry, I was searching for something too. Um, so uh, I just realized something else. You know, I was walking when I was on the boardwalk there in West Palm Beach. You know, I had this playlist that I put together. This is like my gym music, right? We Are Family by Sister Sledge, Kissing My Love, Bill Withers. And then this guy that I dis- discovered through uh Fernando Rosa bass is the account the account that I that I, I follow and this guy just plays all of this funk stuff like he did a Judas Priest cover today he does a bunch of stuff but he plays this you know for a white dude like me deep cut funk shit that I've never heard of and one of the guys he played about a month and a month and a half ago was this guy Bernard Wright and I downloaded this album called Nard. And I cannot recommend it highly enough. And it just blew my mind. This guy's playing all the instruments. He's he's like just a, like a, a prodigy. Like he put this album out. I think he was like 17 or 18 years old. And I was listening to his music that day. And I got back to the hotel. And I saw Quest Love had Bernard Wright rest in peace. And I was like, oh my God, what happened? Because I wanted to see him live in concert. I guess he died in an, unfortunately, in a, some sort of traffic uh, auto accident. Uh, condolences out to him and his family. But, um, I, I, don't, I mean, I couldn't believe it. I was just like, it's so weird. There's just so many f- talented people out there. And to find someone like that, he's so young. I mean, young to me. He was only 58 years old, and you're thinking, I, you know, I bet this guy still kills it. I can't wait to go see him and, and all of this stuff. And uh, so weird. Just just found out, literally found out about like four weeks ago, and now the guy's gone, man. It's fucking brutal. Don't mean to bum you out, but i was been meaning to tell you about this album anyways. Check this album out. Bernard Wright Nard, N-A-R-D. Um, and just know he plays all the instruments, as far as I know. I think he plays all the instruments on the album, and there's a bunch of shit that you'll hear, um, you'll re- immediately recognize in a lot of like the bridges and shit like that, that uh, rappers have sampled and, you know, turned into all these other great songs and all of that shit. Um, I guess Snoop has sampled some of his stuff. Like they were talking like in the obituary, um, some of the major rappers that have sampled his stuff. But Jesus, what a talent and what a sad Sad thing. And let's continue because there's somebody I, I've been meaning to, to talk about who passed away. Someone closer to me in my life was uh, the great Dick Doherty, the godfather, the self-proclaimed godfather of the Boston comedy scene. You know, I don't know what his claim was. He wasn't a ding-ho guy, but I think that he was just like down the Cape, this renegade, Harley driving guy um uh, he had a great run he was 89 years old i mean because i i knew i was like dude, dude that guy had to have been at least 90 because he was like 60 in his 60s when i started i guess he was like 59 fuck i'm almost as old as he was what are you 54 i'm five years away from how old dick doherty was when i started oh my god but um uh, rest in peace dick doherty i i had a great relationship with him uh, throughout the years, I still kept in touch with him on um, social media and stuff, Facebook and that type of stuff. And he's just one of those guys, you know, he gave me, I would say, uh, out of a percentage, the percentage of stage time 
say like, you know, my first two years in comedy, I would say 65 to 70 percent of the stage time was at a Dick Doherty room somewhere. And, he, and this guy, he was like the Freddy. He was like Jason, a Freddy Krueger. You couldn't kill the guy. And people for years were predicting he, this is the, you know, because comedy was in a bad place when I started. The, the, the 80s boom was over and all of that shit. And this fucking guy would have like 10 rooms going. And then all of a sudden, he'd lose one, he'd lose two, and then all of a sudden, he'd lose four. And you just sit there thinking, like, this guy's going under, he's going under, and then he'd, he'd come back with three more. It was like a Mickey Ward, Arturo Gotti fight, except it was Dick Doherty versus, uh, I don't know what, restaurant owners. And um, he had, like, his mainstays. He had this one at a place used to, uh, be called Remington's. I believe Emerson College bought it. They're kind of buying up that whole area. Um, and it used to be a bank. And upstairs there was a bar. And downstairs was the bank. The old, like where the safe was. So they had this giant walk-in safe that they just kept. Because what are you going to do? Throw it out? Fucking door weighs like a zillion pounds. So they always work it into to the decor. It was a really weird shape room. It was like an L-shaped room if the, the, the bottom part of the L was really short. Uh, and the rest of it was the green room. So you went into the green room, which was into a safe. And I remember you came down this ramp. It was a green rug. This guy, Spike Tobin, hosted it. And that's the place where I put together my first five minutes. And then I believe Spike told Dick Doria that I was funny. And then I got to start hosting. And then he used to have these these rooms <clears throat> in um, Chinese restaurants. The Oku Akus or the Aku Aku. I don't know how you said it. Um the Akua Akua. There was one in Worcester, and then there was one in Cambridge. And I remember uh, hosting there. He had a room in Drake it. He had one in Kenmore Square. Uh, Campus Comedy, I think he called it, and he was trying to get people from BU. That one didn't last too long. Drake it was a fucking nightmare. That one didn't last too long. Then he had him up in New Hampshire. Just had him fucking all over the place. And um, that's the place where... Really, I put together on those those satellite rooms. I got good enough to start working for Mike Clark at Giggles and and uh, and the guys at Nick's and the Comedy Connection, uh, Blumenreich and those guys. So it was a really like important person in the Boston comedy scene that has unfortunately passed away. But he had a great run. Eighty nine years old. Rest in peace, Dick Doherty. Thank you so much. For all of the stage time, I mean, that guy gave me hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of stage time way before I fucking deserved it. Um, so uh, there you go. So there's there's the in memorandum part of the uh, the podcast that I'm assuming at this point it's time to do the reads, I think. Right? 16 and 7, 23 minutes? I don't think so. You know, Bill, I don't really think so. How about the fucking Miami Heat? Huh? They come out, they win the first game. Everybody's like, yeah, see, they're the number one seed. They're not getting any fucking respect. Then they got their asses. Where? In game two. And then everybody's thinking, ah, oh, here comes the Celtics and blah, 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 blah. And then they come out like fucking gangbusters. I was working. All I know is they were down by like fucking 24, 27 or something like that. We cut it down to 10. And, um... We couldn't get any closer. But I heard Jimmy Butler's hurt. Everybody's hurt. Everybody's hurt, man. Um, Except me. Well, emotionally, maybe I'm hurt. I don't know. You know, as always, I should just fucking print out these goddamn things instead of having to fucking type the goddamn password in every fucking time. You know what, Bill? Who gives a shit? Exactly. Who gives a fuck? I'm on the other side of mushrooms, people. I don't flip out anymore. Um... What else did I want to talk about? Oh, let's see. West Palm sweat. Celtics lose game three. Trevor Story. You know, if the fucking Red Sox could just sign Xander Bogarts and fucking uh, 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 Rafael Devers. I mean, I think we might have the best infield in baseball. You know? Our pitching's going to come around. Evaldi, what are you? He's, he's always throwing for like seven innings. For the most part, I think I think we'll be all right. Oh, do you, Bill? And what level did you play baseball at? 
I made it to the majors in in, in instruction in uh, little league. <laughs> I did. I played. I played one year of, of of little league, and then I made it to the majors in fifth grade, where you could steal bases, which was fucking cool. But then I got a D in math, and then that was it. My parents were just like, "Your academics come first. And then that was it. I was off the team, and then I never asked to play again because it was just too. It was just you know what I mean, just too much. That's like, I'm not going through that fucking shit again. You know, I can get a D. <laughs> I can keep getting D's in math and not have to deal with turning in a uniform. And that's what I did. I cut out the turning in the uniform part and I just continued to get D's in math and all of that shit. I don't know. I always wondered what would happen if I actually fucking, I don't know, was good at school. Like, where would I have been? Because, yeah, you know, you know what there is? There really is. There's the you that's born, and then there's the shit that happens to you. And then, you know, you spend the rest of your life trying to figure out, like, you know, what would I have been? <laughs> oh, man, that's an interesting movie. You know? I actually think sometimes that when you actually work your way back to who you were supposed to be, you then die. Isn't that weird? Like, how many times you see people, he had just gotten his life together. He was sober. He was the happiest he'd ever been, right? <laughs> he went deep sea fishing. The hook caught him in the seat of the pants, and he threw himself overboard right in the mouth of a killer whale. Oh, you should have seen the look on his face. He didn't even care. He was happy. You know what? You know what? Hey, hey, hey. He figured it out. And that's when everybody else goes, he figured it out. And everybody does the fucking. Yeah, because you know, miserable motherfuckers live forever. Assholes live forever. It's almost like God's like putting off seeing them. Like, all right, I yeah, I know. I, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Bring me a couple of sweethearts, all right? I got a fucking headache today. You know? <laughs> Like so many like musicians, comedians, Stevie Ray Vaughan got sober, put out his best fucking album, and then we lose him. Sam Kinison was sober, was on his way back, was going to get back to the Sam that he was when he first fucking hit, and it was as a you know, fan of stand-up, and I just started doing stand-up and everything like that. I couldn't fucking wait to see what that guy was going to talk about, and he's taken from us. You know what I mean? Donald Trump, Joe Biden, still fucking living. Still alive. Still alive. Trump's eating fucking McDonald's every day. Fucking dude won't die. All right. Joe Biden, maybe he probably had McDonald's. He doesn't fucking remember. Um, I will be honest with you. When I turned on the TV, I did see some news about China in Taiwan and all of that shit. And it's just it's just like, what is going on? Like, I don't understand. What is China doing? You, you got a huge piece of fucking land. You, you made it. Nobody's knocking you off the block. There's a billion of you. You're good. What strategic fucking horseshit do you need by going out there and grabbing that island? Now, I understand Japan. They got a little strip of fucking land. They're like England. That's what happened with England. Bunch of pasty cunts fucking elbow to elbow. Let's get some boats and take some shit. That's what happens. I understand the, uh, Japan doing the same thing. They had to expand. They had to try to expand. Everybody else is allowed to expand. Do you know Japan actually defeated Russia in a war? And when they went in to claim the land, like all the white countries do, all the other white countries got together and said, no, you can't do that. And then they were like, oh, really? Oh, really? Well, here's Pearl Harbor for you. Something like that. I don't remember. I can't remember if I read that or if I fu- No, I did read that. I actually, I used to read people. I used to have time to read. 
and uh, things like that. <laughs> I actually sat down and started. I was reading. Um, the fuck! I got a couple of just trashy fucking magazines. You know, there's no mag. You know what's funny? Those are the only fucking magazines that seem to be left. Magazine stands are gone, and then just like the just the, you know. Um, an older, wiser, who gives a fuck, talks about how she finally figured it all out. Whenever I see those articles, I just think to myself, you didn't figure it all out or God would have taken you. You would have been dead. You know? That's it. You figure it out, you get happy, then you die, and then God's like fucking De Niro. Come here, you. Come here, you. Okay, you didn't rat out your friends. You didn't blame other people for your problems. You got sober and you figured it out. All right. Um, that's what God looks like in my world. He's like Jimmy the Gent, minus the murdering. Although he does create murderers, doesn't he? Or is that the devil? Um, all right. I think I've yammered enough where I can do a little bit of fucking advertising here, can I? Can a bald orange man fucking read some advertising when he wants to? Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, shit. I don't even have the fucking advertising. I went right to the questions. The question, jerk. Um, oh, Simply Safe. I love these guys. Simply Safe, everybody. That's what we all want to be. Simple and safe. Uh, you, guys, you guys know I love the break-in protection that my Simply Safe home security system gives me. I absolutely do. And what I love even more is, is you could literally shoot one of those fucking meerkat shows about the amount of fucking rodents these goddamn raccoons at night coming out there with their creepy hands, jumping up on my trash cans. I had no idea what the fuck was going on out there. Um, but as long as it's not a person, that's fine. But if it is a person, I'm good because I have Simply Safe. Now, a lot of people have a gun on their nightstand. I'm not one of those guys. I have like a KitchenAid with that the, the pasta attachment, and that's what I'm coming at, you know, and I'm dropping it on your foot. Um... But it's not always outside forces that you need Simply Safe's protection from. This is Joshua's story, a Simply Safe customer from Indiana. A few months ago, Jesus, they still telling this story? I want to hear another story. A few months ago, he fell asleep with pizza rolls still in the oven. <laughs> and a bunch of pre rolls right next to his fucking hand. Uh, this could have been disastrous. Thousands of dollars in damage to his kitchen and home or worse. Luckily, Joshua has a comprehensive Simply Safe system equipped with everything to prevent break-ins and smoke detectors to sniff out fires. He startled awake um, to the sound of a 95 decibel alarm from his Simply Safe base station. I got the hiccups now. What did that Mexican guy tell me to do? The home remedies? I already forget. It was lime. You take a lime. You put some fucking Tabasco on it. I don't forget. Um, he startled away to the sound of a 95 decibel alarm from his Simply Safe base station. Seconds later, he got a call from Simply Safe professional monitor. Hey, you fucking pothead. Your pizza's on fire. Thank you, Simply Safe. Uh, the pizza rolls didn't make it, but Joshua did. He believes Simply Safe probably saved his life that night. Well, I, I think he could have gave it up. He, they saved his life. If he was asleep and there was a fire in the structure he was in, I would say absolutely it did. Are you being modest, Simply Safe? Um, protecting people when their guard is down is just one of the reasons more than 4 million people use and love Simply Safe. With a comprehensive Simply Safe system and 24-7 professional monitoring, you always have someone looking out for you. Plus, oh, plans cost under $1 a day with no long-term contracts or hidden feeds. Ever. You can customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash burr. Go today and claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring. Go to simplysafe.com slash burr. That's S-I-M-P-L-I-S-A-F-E dot com. Uh, sorry. Oh, look who it is, everybody. Look who it is. Our old friends, old Zip. Grow it up. 
Zip Recruiter, everybody. You know, certain people just make my life so much easier. I don't know what I'd do without them. Talk about a person or people you rely on to help you out with certain things. You know what? My kids make my life easy. I come home, dad, 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 dad. They make me feel loved. They come up, they give me hugs, and then they jump on me and fucking drop elbows and stuff, and I think it's hilarious, and then I take them for a ride in my old, my old truck. It's fun. Um, examples, a family member or a friend. I just did that. Your partner. I am not in a gay relationship. Your co-host. I don't have a co-host. Your personal assistant. Your podcast producer. You know, Andrew Themelis. I mean, not only does he pick out good music, every it's obscure music. He introduces you to new bands. I don't know what I'd do without him. It's been working for me forever. Um, crushing it. Uh, it's like you own a grow it's like if you own a growing business and need to hire Zip Recruiter. Uh, ZipRecruiter makes hiring so much easier because they do the work for you. And right now, you can try it for free at zip.com slash burr. ZipRecruiter uses its powerful technology. That's powerful. Technology to find and match the right candidate up with your job. You can easily review these recommended candidates and invite your top choices to apply. Additionally, Zip Recruiter. It's an old car. Has a complete suite of tools that make it easy to filter, review, and rate your candidates. Four to five. Who post on Zip? That was me falling off a cliff before I could finish saying it. Get a quality candidate within the first day. No wonder ZipRecruiter is the number one rated hiring site. Based on G2 satisfaction ratings as of January 1st, 2022. In fact, the hardest thing you have to do uh, is to remember our special URL, ziprecruiter.com slash burr. That's where you go uh, to try Zip for free. Once again, that's ziprecruiter.com slash burr. Spell out burr, B-U-R-R. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. All right. Well, speaking of the smartest way to do things, I'm going to mosey on over here and get myself... A liquid death. Boy, oh boy, do I love a liquid death. What do I like about a liquid death? Well, I'll tell you. What would you rather do? Would you rather drink beer out of a can? Or would you want to drink it out of a plastic fucking bottle? Why have we been drinking water out of plastic bottles for all of these fucking years? Because that's how it started. And we never knew there was a better way. It's like how America is slowly discovering a bidet. All of these years of using toilet paper when you could really just have your fucking asshole sprayed down like it showed up at a protest. (laughs) Sorry, it's delicious. Mm. Ah, I love it. Um, God damn it, that's good fucking water. All right, you know what I, I actually found that I haven't played in a while here? Where the fuck is it, you cocksucker? Remember this one? Come on. Come on. Oh, does that not work anymore? It's time for advice. Hey! Your host, Billy Burns. That's me! And How are you? You know, each week you guys write in. You know, why do you write in? Because you don't have someone special in your life? You can't afford therapy? I don't know what it is. Or maybe you just like hearing how stupid I am. People write in all the time. They ask me questions. They ask for advice. I don't know why. I don't have any sort of training. I don't have a degree in anything. But you guys ask me questions. You tell me about stuff. You tell me I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Dude, I'm telling you right now, the screensaver on my com- no, this new computer screen, I don't know what this is. This is like if I was on acid and I was looking at a porcupine and the sun was going down really fast. Does that make any sense? 
It's like if I was really close to the thing. No, I'm not on drugs right now, but it's just it's mesmerizing. Um, all right, question. Hey, Billy Boy. Funny enough, the song you sang a snippet of is called Billy Boy. Miles Davis is the only person in history who could make it cool, and he did a hip cover of it on his album Milestones. Um, listen to Philly Joe Jones just play the shit out of those drums. Oh, that, yeah. Tell me where have you been, Billy boy, Billy boy. Tell me where have you been, charming Billy. He's a young kid that wants to go with scouting like a scout. He's a young kid that wants to go with scouting. And just when you think that horrible song's over, there's a second for can't. Can you scramble me an egg, Billy boy, Billy boy? Can you scramble me an egg, charming Billy? I fucking hated that song when I was a kid. Kids used to just fucking sing. You know, it's weird that that was enough to set you off. You know, especially if, you know, you, you if you were left-handed and had red hair and you were basically the devil spawn fucking ginger that I was. Um, that was enough to set you off when you were a little kid. If somebody, if they if so, older, bigger kids started singing a song that had an, your name in it, probably because it said charming. Because the big kids, can you scramble me an egg? Charming Billy. I'd be like, stop singing that song. And they're like, all right, entertainment. Let's get this fucking freckled cunt going, right? Um, What was another one? Billy, don't be a hero. Don't be a fool with your life. They would sing that. Walking through the woods. It's like, can you guys just get to beating the shit out of me? Can you please stop with the fucking Billy karaoke? Um, so Miles Davis did a hip version of it. Um, anyway, hey, years, years ago, this person continues, before therapy, I sent a really stupid email to you, which you referenced on the show. I was ticked at the time, but I feel a pang of embarrassment, regret, whatever, whenever it crosses my mind. Hey, you're forgiven. You're forgiven. I don't care. We all get like that. No problem, okay? And if I read your email today, I still wouldn't have a problem with it because I know it would have nothing to do with me. Something happened to you, and you're working it out. All right, I'm working out my shit. You're working out your shit. I hope China can work out their shit with America. We don't fucking kill a bunch of innocent people on both sides. Why don't these suited cunts fucking relax? Um, anyway, not that it matters, but sorry, man. I'm glad you talk about therapy. Maybe if men keep going, we can all have less stupid shit to deal with in this world. Go fuck yourself to Philly Joe Jones, unachievable perfection. That's funny. Um, yeah. Yeah, if I, 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 I don't like, uh, I don't, I don't fucking carry shit anymore. It's fucking great. It's fucking great. It's a great a great fucking place to be. Um, and you could do it, too. If I did it, German-Irish fucking lunatic, you could do it, too. Um, yeah, I got this new thing, man. When, when, I, with, when I meet people or whatever, um, I finally had, I used to, like, when I used to meet psychos, you know, I grew up with psychos, and I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to be with, like, psychos anymore. You know, when I, when I, Grow up, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to have a psycho-free fucking life. No lunatics, right? And then you go out in the world and you meet lunatics and it feels like home. And you're like, oh, I, I relate to this. This feels like my hometown. This feels like the way I grew up. Blah, 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 blah. And then you end up recreating the shit and then you end up doing the shit you didn't want to be doing, right? So now that I'm on the other side of that, now I can kind of like, I don't know. When you get older, you can kind of fast forward through relationships. So now this is my shit. If I talk to somebody, have a meeting with somebody, business, fucking whatever, or maybe I'm, you know, meet somebody, and maybe we're gonna start hanging out. If after I hang out with them or talk to them on the phone or or email exchange, if I have to unpack shit, if I'm walking around talking to myself, going, I should have said this when they said that. Yeah, fuck that person. You know, business is one thing though. You know, business, it's like you kind of have to like, you can't just, you know. Business is a weird world, you know. You, you kind of have to put up with a certain degree of shit. But just in general, um, I find myself now, I start to get angry, and then I go, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Fuck this person. Out of my life. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh, that's it. 
out, out the door. Then I put on a polyester shirt and I fucking dance like that guy in airplane to disco. And I have a great night. Um, that's my new thing. It's been working out for me. Anyway, I think Bill Burr saved my life at the Hollywood Bowl. What are you talking about? I did like seven minutes and I left. Hi, Bill. Bill. Oh, hi, Bill. Recruiter. Burr. I flew over from L.A. from Australia, and the day we arrived was Dave Chappelle and friends at the Hollywood Bowl. I'm never going to forget that. I am never going to forget. Thank you to Dave Chappelle. If I didn't say it already. I know I said it to him directly, but Jesus Christ. I have to say it on the podcast. Like I will never fucking forget the level of artists that I've seen on that fucking stage to be standing there was just surreal. Anyway, before jumping in the Uber to the go to the bowl, I ate one gummy, just one. Well, that all depends on how many milligrams it was. Uh, night was going well, felt a little buzzed. My girlfriend, now fiance, congratulations, and I found our seats and started to enjoy Jeff Ross doing his thing. Everything was going well until the sun went down. The gummy is obviously nocturnal, and this hit, and his little demon ass woke the fuck up. Oh, boy. Feeling overwhelmed with paranoia. You can't. You can't give in to it, man. You got to ride it out. You got to ride it out and just be like, of course I'm paranoid. I ate marijuana. That's it. That's what this is. There's nothing really to fear here. Okay, something you know, other than the lunatic who charged the stage. All right, I'm going to continue. Ask, I asked my girlfriend to get me a Coke and a water. Big mistake. She must have been gone for 10 minutes. And boy, oh boy, did it feel like an hour to me. Oh, my God. Dude, you didn't eat a gummy. You ate gummies or you ate something that was like in the 30 to 50 range, I would guess. I started to panic thinking something has happened to her. I ran to the drink lines and could not find her. Oh, dude, are, are you new to this shit? Just sit there and laugh about how scared you are. Whenever I would get like that, I just would just, I would think of fucking Shaggy on Scooby-Doo. And I, I, I like when he, he wouldn't say, whoa, he'd say like before it. Like, whoa, that's what I would think. When I would start freaking out if I ate something and I, and, and I thought I had reached the top floor only to realize that I was only halfway up. That's what I would always do to keep myself calm. I would just think of Shaggy, and I would just go, like, whoa. And it would just make me laugh. And I'm like, all right. Because it's really not about how high you're going to go. It's, it's, it's really about you need to feel that initial descent. And you're like, all right, I survived. I made it all the way to the top, and now we're going back down again. Even if you're a 1,000 fucking feet in the air. You know, you know that now you're at 980 and you survived a thousand and then you're fine. So I, it's, it's, it's the way up that's fucking scary, I find. Um, anyway, said she must have been gone for 10 minutes and boy, oh boy, did it feel like an hour to me. I started panicking. I started panicking thinking something has happened to her. So I ran to the drink lines and could not find her. I ran to the security and got them all looking for her. I was convinced something had happened to her. After causing such a ruckus, I returned to my seat to find her sitting they're shaking her head. Oh, God, I've been there. By the time I explained the shenanigans to my girl, my girlfriend, they began to announce the next guest. You. Seeing the moon man head str- <laughs> strut across the stage brought me such joy and excitement and took me right out of the paranoid state I was in. Turned out to be the greatest night of the trip meaning the vacation, uh, second to proposing to my fiancé at Disneyland. Good for you. Uh, what ride were you on? Uh, close second. Um, oh, thanks for saving the day and go fuck yourself. Oh, all right, man. I've been there. I've been there. That happened to me earlier this year. I, I, I thought I was taking 10, which I can handle, and I accidentally, you know, I didn't talk to the person who gave them to me, and I, I think I think I had at least forty, if not fifty, and I was sitting. I was in a chair that I wanted to get up out of for two hours, and just could not figure out how to do it. If I just stood up, it would have been fine. But I was just like, my head felt like a magnet. <laughs> you know what I mean? When there's another magnet close by, 
and they're op- opposite or the same charge, so they're like pushing each other away. That's what that felt like. That was inside my head. Um, that's a pretty good description, I would say. All right, UFO talk. Oh, I love this shit. I'd love to meet an alien, and just be like, "What the fuck? Are you, why the fuck would you come here? You missed it, man. You should have been here a couple hundred years ago before we fucked this whole thing up." You needed to get here before plastic and nuclear weapons and the gas combustion engine. That's when you should have came here. I don't know what to tell you. Before white people came out to this side of the fucking world. That's when you needed to get here. You missed it. You missed the boat. What, what do you want here, huh? You're going to take over the planet? What are you going to do next? Buy a VCR? This place is uh, it's over. Um, Bill. You ever get the feeling that all these open government hearings about UFOs is a bit suspect? Why are they all of a sudden asking questions out in the open about this? They denied everything but the moon's existence. But now they want an open conversation about this. It's a huge leap. I tend to believe the theory that they want us to think new hypersonic planes are really alien ships so that they don't have to share the technology with us. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Every military plane, for the most part, other than a cargo plane, flies faster than... They have all kinds of shit in the military and they're not going to share with us. Why should they share it with us? Where the fuck do you have to go in hypersonic speed? Look how fast COVID spread. You want to be hypersonic... After you fucking jerk off a bat and fuck a monkey, whatever, whatever the fuck these things come from. There's always some, there's always somebody doing something with an ant. Stay away from the fucking animal. Jesus Christ. What's wrong with people? Um, I tend to believe the theory. Okay, okay all right. Uh, they want to keep the new hypersonic planes. No, they're already advertising those things. What fucked over supersonic travel, unfortunately was that was the uh, the Concord crashing, I think. But that was around for like 20 years and nobody else jumped on it. But that was always a dream of mine. I always wanted to fly that thing from New York over to Paris in like fucking three hours, whatever it did. It just seemed fucking incredible. Um, but no, that shit's coming. I think that they're going to have fucking electric ones. If we survive, I think they're going to have like you know, the electric ones and uh, oh, but the thing what we have to do is we have to fucking recycle. We never fucking recycle like all of these goddamn batteries that they're going to put in these things. Now, you know, goddamn well with, you know, all of the, the carbon footprint of all this shit you have to get. Right. What the fuck? What the what are all battery lithium? Is that what that's all made of? Then I heard China like bought up all the fucking mines. See, this is what happens. You get a little bit of information. Oh, that's why we're saying China's doing something because we want to get the lithium back from them and, and there's hypersonic planes. This is why I tapped out from all of this shit. And I'm watching baseball this early. I'm telling you, pe- people, don't worry about shit that's bigger than your pay grade. All right? Get yourself a habit. Coffee, cigars, all of the above, drinking, whatever the fuck you're into. Pick a team and just follow them. And let these assholes fucking... I don't, I don't what I I can't deal with it anymore. Anyway, I'm getting to, okay, I'm bumming you guys out. I'm sorry. It's already confirmed other countries have hypersonic weapons. Hypersonic weapons. You went from planes to on these hypersonic planes they have weapons on them. What's a hypersonic sonic weapon? How much faster can the missile get here? I can't imagine Uncle Sam not being in the same business. All paid for by suckers like us who will never get to ride past Jupiter or Mars. In other words, thanks for the laughs. I have, for the fucking life of me, I have no idea why anybody wants to go to Mars. Why would you want to do, like, that is just the ultimate cross-country fucking flight. I will tell you this, dude, right now. I understand wanting to go into outer space. All right? And then come back. Okay, the bottom line is it's all about coming back 
and, te- and, and talking loud about it near beautiful women, so maybe one of them will fuck you. How are you going to do that if you're going all the way out to, like, I don't know where? You realize how fucking cold it's going to be out there? On Mars? I don't know. You know, let's, let's, you know what? I'm going to look up Mars forecast. Let's see what they say. Let me see here. Planet Mars Fork it doesn't even come up. Forecast. Planet Mars, National Weather Surface. Temperatures on Mars average minus eighty one degrees Fahrenheit. You know it's fucking funny? A Green Bay Packer game, the right time of year is actually colder than that. Can be. Uh, maybe not. Uh, however, temperatures range from around 200, minus 220 degrees Fahrenheit in the wintertime at the poles to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, that's when you want to go. Oh, my God. We want a trip to Mars, but it's in the winter. Oh. Went there. My nose fell off. So, of course, it wasn't covered. You know, and like Delta wouldn't let me board. And I was like, you're letting all these other people board before group one. I lost my nose on this trip. And they said, we're sorry. There's nothing we can do about it. Um, they can keep their hypersonic travel. I don't give a fuck. They can have underground tunnels. They can put fucking, you know, elk heads on and fuck each other. I don't give a fuck what they do. As long as I can just sit on my back porch and nobody fucks with me. And I can just look at the little piece of fucking land that I that they let me have until they decide it's not mine anymore. I, as long as I can do that, I'm good. Then all I need is just the sports packages, by the way. And I, I want to apologize to the race fans uh, who feel neglected on this. I am so fucking far behind in F1 and Moto. I don't even know what's going on in MotoGP. Last I looked in F1, Ferrari was winning. Mercedes was trying to figure it out, and Red Bull finally got their act together i missed the miami race and i missed the one that happened i believe today uh my wife deleted one of them and then i think she fucked up the recording on it and and i'm doing a bunch of shit and i know i'm I'm missing the season i wanted to see which is ferrari came back and then lewis hamilton's having a problem which if you're a fan of racing that's what the fuck you that's the scenario you want because now you're going to see some racing if Lewis Hamilton's not having a fucking problem from the jump, you know, I mean, last year was great and everything like that, but I didn't like how it ended, you know, that fucking restart and everything. That was bullshit. Um, although, I, th- you know, and he handled it like a fucking man, so what are you going to do? But I, I like watching that guy having to play catch up. I like watching Mercedes have to fucking catch up because if they're out, in the, if they're, if the, you know, they're out there in the clean air, the whole thing's over. I know, Bill. You say this every time you bring it up. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Home remedy. Remedy. I need a remedy. Remedy. Banana peel to treat warts. Hey, Billy Ginger Snap. Lady listener here from Billings, Montana. Ah, man. I haven't been up there. I don't think I've ever been there. I went to Hastings. That was Nebraska. Did I go to Helena? Maybe I went to Billings. I can't remember. Anyway, my grandmother and mom have a home remedy for treating warts. Rub the inner surface of a ripe banana peel on the wart and then bury the banana peel in the backyard. What? Burying the peel in the backyard seems a bit witch doctory. All right, thank you. We're on the same page again. But I can say I've tried the remedy and it does work. Love the podcast. Come to Montana. What the... (laughs) That's somebody just fucking with me. I mean, what is burying it? What does that do? What the fuck would... (laughs) I would think at some point that that would then affect the banana. The banana would have warts. I don't... I don't understand. All right. I'm not doing that. All right? I'm not... You know what? I'm not playing. I... You know what? I have too much to unpack on that. I'm done with you. I'm walking away. See that? I'm mature. Mm. All right. That is the podcast, everybody. Let's go Celtics. Let's go Red Sox. 
That's all we got going on. No more Bruins. God damn it. Um, I watched a little bit of Calgary versus Edmonton. I didn't know they had a Vander Kane. I'm just fucking out of the loop. Remember how on it I used to be? I'm not saying I used to pick the games, but I fucking knew who was playing. I don't know shit anymore. Oh, brother. Um, whatever. Who gives a fuck? This is the podcast. I had fun. I hope you had fun. All right? I'm telling you, man, try that. If fucking people are, are if, if they're a lot, if somebody's a fucking lot, if somebody in your life calls and you look down and you see their fucking number, you just see their phone number, and you're just like, oh, my God. Hey, don't pick up. Don't pick up. All right? Just let them fade away. Or you can just have a conversation with them, just being like, yeah, you know, it's just, uh, you know, my friends are easy. We hang out. We have a good time. We laugh. And afterwards, I'm glad it happened. I don't walk around in my pajamas at 3 in the morning later on <laughs> talking about it. All right, that's it. Go fuck yourselves, and I'll check in on you on Thursday. Now, how do I shut this thing off? This is my newfangled thing. This is the this is the bonus part of this fucking podcast. I don't know how to shut this off. Well, I guess maybe I could edit it out. Edit it out. Okay, and then... Oh, you fucking whore. All right. Why does it keep doing this shit? Why, oh, why won't you fucking work for me? Oh, it's a wireless keyboard, man. It's not tethered to nothing, man. So now what do I do? Oh, I have to go with the mouse. The mouse. The mouse? Okay. Then I do this, and then for some reason, like 20 fucking letters come in. All right, all right, all right, all right. There we go. Fuck you, you cunt. Oh, you fucking whore. Why, why a wireless fucking... Why would you go wireless? I'm not going to lie to you. This is embarrassing. This fucking keyboard, it's fucking wireless and just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. You know what? I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out, and then everything will be fine. <laughs>